South Korea continues to attract artists in all shapes and forms who come here for inspiration, collaboration or exhibitions. One such artist is John Bergerman, the world-renowned doodler, who is in Seoul for his exhibition called Fun Factory, colon, Superstar John Bergerman. The British artist, now based in New York, is a leading figure in the popular doodle art style. And to tell us more about this, I'm thrilled to say that we have Mr. Bergerman himself here with us in the studio. John, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me here. So, as I said, you're widely recognised as a professional quote-unquote doodler <laughs> and considered one of the leading figures in doodling. Can you explain what this means and about uh, your work in general? Uh, doodling, for me, is thinking and making at the same time. Mm. And the term doodling that has sort of uh, been attached to me and my work is something uh, with a, a, a phrase I used at the very beginning of my career when I started uh, creating my art, a lot of people asked me what it was. What is this style? What is this work you're making? And I didn't really have a great answer for it. It's just the work I like to make. Mm. Um, so rather sort of offhandedly, I would say it was a doodle. Oh, it's just a doodle. I'm just doodling. <laughs> Let's not get too caught up in sort of labeling. Mm. And then that became a label. <laughs> so... Uh, Are you okay with that label? Yeah, I'm totally fine. I mean, the, the point is I don't really mind about a label mm. um i understand we need labels to help us understand and, and and talk about uh different things and um so it's stuck and over the years i've uh seen that lots of other people now align themselves with being doodlers mm. and making doodle art mm. and somehow i've yeah i've been part of something that when my career started didn't really exist in that way of course, there have been many artists that sort of draw spontaneously and mm. intuitively and stuff. But um, having this, this label has, has sort of come around fairly recently. I mean, it's unfortunate whenever we have an artist on this show because we can't see the artworks because we're a radio show. <laughs> and it's especially a shame because your artworks are so vibrant, colourful and fun. I recommend any listeners that have access to the internet while listening, you should give a quick search of John Bergman to see what kind of things he does. We will provide pictures of... Uh, his work on our social media after this uh, interview airs as well. You have a fine arts degree, so I'm guessing you always wanted to become an artist, but then how did you become, you know, this uh, label of uh, being a doodler? Um, well, I graduated from fine art, and like probably a lot of artists, then was quite petrified about how to earn a living <laughs> and what on earth I was going to do with a fine arts degree. But uh, yeah, you're right. I always wanted to be an artist, and I knew I just wanted to if I would keep working. I think the the that is the struggle that you you face as a young artist is being able to uh, keep going and afford to be able to make your work. It takes a lot of time. You put a lot of hours in, mm. day and night, to to make your art, and um, that's what I did. I just kept going, and I was trying to be as resourceful as possible use whatever materials I could find it didn't have to be expensive stuff and I could draw on anything and work anywhere and really that began to lay the foundation for what my you know, practice evolved into mm. uh, so now I'm very happy to draw on walls or on people or on canvas or on paper or on cars or anything and use whatever materials I, I can find. Right. Your works can sometimes be small. It can be huge, mm -hmm. like uh, um, murals and huge canvases. Can you explain a little bit about how you start a piece? I mean, we talked a little bit about uh, spontaneity. Do you mm. have something in mind? Do you literally start with a doodle or do you have a plan? Uh, it depends on what the piece is and who it's for and what it's for and where it's going to be. But generally, I have an idea in my head. Mm. I have something that I wish I could achieve that I'm trying to say or emote with the piece, let's say a painting, and I will just, uh, you know, start the work mm. and make it. And then, like, my idea of doodling is that I'm thinking and making at the same time. So I'm creating this thing, and I'm thinking deeply about what it is I'm doing, mm. but it's starting to change. Maybe it's not turning out the way I imagined in my head, mm. or the material is reacting in a different way, and then I adapt. And the work can grow and change as I'm creating it. So then when I step back after a period of time making it, maybe it's different to the vision I had in my head, but it's become something else. It's become its own thing. And the more I do that, 
the more I become practiced in that kind of methodology and the more I learn about what works and what doesn't work and I take that to the next piece and the next piece and the next piece. So I don't really do sketches, right. which sometimes when doing commercial work is confusing for a client. I just <laughs> right. say, let me make it right, and we'll, let's see what happens. Right. Uh, does it, do you ever, when it does perhaps go wrong or not as you expected, does, it, does you ever get afraid or, you know, how this going to turn out? Um, a little bit of fear is good. No, <laughs> no. But one, because I'm, we're talking about p paper and pens and stuff. This, you know, I'm not carving stuff out of marble. It's not, uh, it's not taking me years to make one single piece. So if it doesn't work, I do another one or I start again. But there's a, I really try and get away from the idea of right and wrong, mm. um, something being uh, good and something being bad or being a failure, because there's there's something interesting in, in all the works, and maybe to me they haven't hit all, all the points that I wanted to achieve, but maybe to someone else they will see it and they'll find something else in there. As the artist, you don't always know. Mm. You don't always know what it is. You maybe need some time away from it or you know, make a b body of work and then realize what it is you were doing. It's so, There's a little mystery in the art making, a little sort of uh, something that you can't quite put your finger on. And that's what keeps you going, making more and more works. What qualities do you need to become a quote unquote professional doodler? <laughs> I mean, can anyone become a doodler, do you think? I mean, a anyone can doodle, anyone can draw. I think everyone should put some time aside to be creative. If you want to do it as a career, in any art form, you need to be tenacious and mm. you need to have an entrepreneurial bent. You need to uh, just be very determined. And I think you need to, um, yeah, on top of all the hard work and dedication, you need to have something that's not already there. Mm. I think um, it's a very short-lived thing if you're just sort of uh, replicating what's already out there. You need to need to stand out a little bit, I guess, especially in this modern age where um, we're bombarded with images and art and everything online all the time. So you, you need to stand out a little bit. Um, I yeah. think the term doodle perhaps uh, perhaps a little undermines what you do as well, because the thing is, what I noticed about your work is the variety and the sheer amount of work that you do. Mm -hmm. You do so much. You're always drawing, it seems. You're mm -hmm. always creating something new. Mm -hmm. Even when you're sitting on a subway, mm -hmm. you're drawing something, you're doodling something, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're it goes beyond just a simple doodle. It becomes an art form in itself. It has now, basically, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, th yeah, I mean, uh, going back to what I said at the beginning, it, using the term doodle was somewhat self-deprecating, mm. you know, in a, a classic British kind of way. <laughs> I was about I was to say, yes. Trying to <laughs> deflect any highfalutin sort mm. of conversations about what it is and what I do. But yeah, I mean, uh, doodling is part of it, but it's not everything I do. And um, yeah, the, the there can be um, it can be a little problematic when people uh, can easily dismiss what you do. Oh, it's just a doodle. You just you didn't re you weren't really thinking. You just scribble something down and you're mm. done. And uh, that can be a little uh, a little bit difficult to uh, get people to 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 see beyond. Which is why it's so wonderful to have you know opportunities like the exhibition, right? Where you can show a breadth of work and you know paintings and and other art forms that I make as well, which. Um, Perfectly segues into right. my next question. Can you tell us a little bit more about this exhibition in Seoul? Well, yeah. I was having an exhibition in Seoul in a gallery, um, which had been organized about a year ago, I think. And then I got a call from my um, agent, uh, Art Delight, who said, um, a museum were interested in, in having a show. Would you be interested in sw swapping your show to a bigger venue? And of course, I was like, "Yeah, that sounds <laughs> that sounds amazing." What I didn't realize was quite how big the venue was, right? Okay, and how much work would be involved. And I th that's another sort of reoccurring theme of my career is um, maybe even deciding to be an artist. If I'd have known what was involved, <laughs> maybe I would have <laughs> would have asked a few more questions. But um, it's been crazy. It's been really, really good. Um, so, I mean, what's your favorite piece from this exhibition? What are you uh, most proud of here? Well, I guess, uh, you know, we were talking about it a little bit, like the paintings, where I was creating artworks to exhibit in a in an art exhibition. And um, although the venue changed, the work the work is still there. And um, I'm proud of those because they're 
they're the most recent things I've made. I'm always most excited about the, the things I've just done because I'm you see all the potential for how they could be developed and how I could you know continue uh, pushing those kind of ideas. So the new canvases are the things I'm most excited about. And with with uh, M Contemporary, they ha they have the opportunity to show giant videos, mm. huge projections, which I've never really. Um, made before i made a couple but like so to to get into sort of making um animated pieces of my work has been really fantastic and what do you hope visitors take away from your exhibition merchandise uh, <laughs> good happy memories uh, no i hope they i hope they um well, i hope they have a great time in there mm. and there's a lot of you know like fun experiences in the different rooms um and then i hope when they th they go home i hope they feel inspired to make their own their own work i mean this is something that i'm very encouraging of in my career in general is that um it's really great to create you know it's good for you it's fun to express yourself creatively and i hope people will see my work and feel excited that they can have a go themselves well, John Bergerman's exhibition titled Fun Factory, Colon Superstar John Bergerman is currently being held at the M Contemporary Art Centre in Seoul and it runs until September 29th. There's still plenty of time to check out his vibrant artwork. You should also check out his social media profiles as well because there are so much fun little gems that he posts up on those and you'll understand his creative process a little bit more as well, I think. John, thank you for being with us today. We wish you all the best of luck for your future endeavours. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.